am Steve Ehrman, and I'd like to make some comments about prune, summer pruning this Indian free peach tree. I'm disinfecting my cutter because I just used it on another tree, and I don't want to share the possibility of, of um, the spread of bacterial canker or any other disease. This is a particularly good kind of a variety of peach to grow because it is resistant to peach leaf curl. There are many, many varieties of peaches that are prone, most are prone to uh, peach leaf curl. The, the, when the tree grow, puts out its first leaves in the spring, the fungus attacks, the leaves become distorted, they still continue to photosynthesize, but ultimately the, tr the tree will drop those, pe those leaves and then it has to produce a whole new set of leaves and that weakens the tree, making it more vulnerable to diseases like Pseudomonas, bacterial canker. So this tree, uh, it's not self-fertile, so it's important to have another variety of peach that blossoms exactly at the same time as a pollinizer for this. This is a late peach and people who have them very much like them. But I would, if you're going to plant a peach tree, I would look into peach, uh, uh, peach curl resistant trees. There's Avalon Pride, Muir, um, Indian Free, and a couple of others. You just have to ask about them. So in pruning this in the summer, I'm going to bring the verticals down on a peach the flowers occur on the wood that grew from the year before. So this segment is a foot long and the flowers will grow on this segment the following year. So we can cut that down by two thirds and it still leaves a little bit to flower. The weight of the peaches way out here becomes excessive. So it's nice to bring the branch in and we'll steal some of its vigor so that next year it won't have as much carbohydrate to shoot way up in the spring. Because you really don't want to be on a ladder picking fruit, spraying trees, maintaining things. Being on ladders is not great for older folks like me. It has fruit way up here because of successive years of vertical growth that eventually developed uh, good fruit-bearing wood, but it's too tall. So I would like to see about bringing it down. And you can do that by summer pruning. Ideally, when, when you thin peaches, you should keep them about this six inches apart. If you have too many peaches, especially when they touch, they can be inclined to brown rot, which is um, uh, a, a disease that creates a brown circle, and then within a day, half the peach is rotten. So you need good air circulation, air circulation around the peaches as they're developing, especially in the last couple in, uh, weeks as they're ripening and it may be of benefit to remove some leaves around the peaches to improve the air circulation. So brown rot is an entirely different disease from peach leaf curl. It's a different fungus. Melalinia fructicola. And with cherries, it's Melalinia laxus. Okay, so that just brought this down a little bit. I could look in and cut major branches, but I don't want to be that dramatic at this point. I just want to bring it down somewhat. And of course I'm removing anything that looks sickly. I'll move the ladder and get in carefully. Yeah, 
Yeah, there are some kind of dead twigs here. I'm removing those. Anything dead, diseased, dying, removed it from the tree. Doesn't do any good to leave on the tree. Here's some, some Pseudomonas if you want to see it. Um, um, can you see this, Cleo? This orange amber, hmm. amber colored ooze? Mm -hmm. that, that's Pseudomonas, bacterial canker. Okay, you say it. Yeah, this, this is a hypoxylon. This is a fungus that goes in and eats the, can eats the wood on the inside. It's often an indication that the branch has some short, shortened life. And here's bacterial canker, amber-colored ooze. all fungus food and that's hypoxylon. So that fungus is allowed to penetrate into the trunk. If you remove it, this portion of the tree can attempt to seal. And in time, probably won't. Peaches only last perhaps 15 years around here at best. You can go in here and do thinning cuts too. Where did my cutters go? Yeah, this area in here has too many small branches. This one's going back inward into the tree, so make a thinning cut to remove it entirely. Here's a little bit of a stub. Remove it. Remove that dead little piece, that piece. It's too much traffic. Not enough light is getting in here. And if you don't get light, a tree will not leave its leaves on that branch. Eventually the branch will die. There's a little bit of a stub, remove that. This is going in the wrong direction. So it just opens it up. This is dead on it further down. Well, that still has a peach, otherwise I'd remove it. Cut out those little dead ones. Yeah, that's too long, but it has peaches on the end of it, so we'll leave it. You could cut them off after the peaches have go gone off. Yeah, it becomes like a redwood forest if there's, if there's no sunlight coming in. The lower branches of a redwood tree die off. And you go into a redwood forest and there are no branches till 100 feet up because there's no light in there. You have to open it up the area so that the sun can penetrate. In general, when you prune a tree, at least in the dormant season, you can take off at least 50% of the peach. Bringing the branch back by two thirds and leaving the, the peaches on the first third so that it doesn't weigh the branch down so heavily that it'll be prone to breaking. These can be cut back. There were two together, so I just left this one. Cut back, lighten it up. And so once again, after these peaches are gone, these branches can be cut up too. But right now they're supplying some carbohydrate for the sugar for the peach to develop. Okay.
Well, that's thinned it out. But the major branches up there, I would probably do it in the dormant season if you wanted to bring that whole segment down. It might be too much of a, sh of a shock on the tree to do it right now.